Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing? Welcome back to the Dojo, aka the Dojang, aka the John the Ninja Studios. Concert number 19 is on its way. This one is Slayer with Testament and Carcass. With my good buddy Zach Hackett. Yes, I'm name dropping him even though he doesn't want me to. Shh. He's embarrassed of the time we spent together. Or maybe he works in a place that wouldn't look too kindly for him hanging out with me. Either way. It was at the Fillmore in Philadelphia. Slayer was coming back to town, and when I initially heard this, Slayer was dropping their last studio album, Repentless, at least at the time of this recording. They have broken up for good since now. And it's 2016, it's March, and I just remember, okay, I've seen Slayer with Greg. I gotta see him with Zach. Because this bastard, Zach, he wants to call me on, I think it was the day after Thanksgiving? You know, I'm home with my dad, I'm on the couch, and I get a phone call from Zach. So I pick up the phone, all I hear is... <sighs> Zach and his uncle, Walter, are in Camden, and they got last-minute tickets to see Slayer at the bb and Pavilion. Then it was the Susquehanna Bank Center, but they're up close, I'm getting pictures, I'm just listening to the music, and I'm like, you saucy bastard. So I was like, Zach, let's go see. He was like, fine. So I believe I was able to get tickets. Now, what is fun about the facts of this day is that was the day I interviewed Rich Meyer from Highly Suspect. Now, at the time, Highly Suspect just broke through the glass ceiling. They're popping off. They just released Lydia. I believe this was still the time frame when they were up for the... No, they already did the Grammys. So they just did the Grammys. They were nominated for Best Rock Album, and they were just on the scene, killing it. Lydia was everywhere, and I was fortunate enough to get a CD from W. Evermar, which was a promo disc with a nice little different version of Blood Feather on it. So anyway, I remember this because I was, I was trying to remember whether or not I had class. That was the day I had the interview with him. They were doing something for MMR, so I did the interview. I drove to Zach Hackett's house. And then we hung out, and then I'm pretty sure we went to get a drink in Philly. Let me let me look inside. Oh, we did. So anyway, we drove into Philly. We went to the Yards Brewery. We got a couple of brews, got back in the car, and on the whole way there, went from Zach's house to Philly, brewery, all that. We were listening to Slayer's masterpiece, Rain and Blood. And we went through that whole entire CD we're driving to the casino, if you don't know. I'm pretty sure it was Sugar House at the time. Sugar House Casino. We're driving to the waterfront, and we're listening to this whole entire album. We don't understand a thing. Now that I've listened to Slayer a couple of times, now I understand the words. I can hear the rhythm and the music. Like, when I first started drumming, I couldn't even hear the beat. I was just like, what the hell? So, you know, we're listening to half this album, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, turn the tourniquet around your neck. We just both pause, like... <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> for some reason that was the only lyric we understood and i think it was comical because zach is a trainer now and you know i've been fortunate my mom and dad my dad's a biologist my mother's a nurse lo and behold i work at a pharmacy you know it was just something we did not expect at all turn it around your neck it just made us laugh. It was a really comical moment thinking about it now. <laughs> so, we get there. We park at the casino. We go inside. We gamble for a little bit. I think we made like... I made like 15 bucks and probably blew it. And made, you know, back to 5 bucks. And then Zach made... I think he made 25 bucks just playing the slots. We didn't do anything too crazy. We just walked in. We had a good time. We walked back out. And then we went into the film. This is our first time at the newly done, refurnished Fillmore in Philadelphia. I've been there so many times since. It's it's a mainstay for me anytime I go to a concert. I've seen so many great acts. I've seen Snoop Dogg. I've seen Steel Panther. Obviously, God did not like that I saw either one of those artists there. But lo and behold, you know that light flickers on and off when God wants me to tell you something. So we show up there, and it's a pretty solid set list. I'm going to say we walked in, got all the way to the front, best we could and then carcass came out now carcass just reformed as a band they just had a new album and their lead singer slash bass player that dude is probably the best acknowledger that you want to go home with something 
So he'd grab a pick. This is what we do. <laughs> Throw a pick. Grab a pick. <laughs> Throw a pick. Grab a pick. <laughs> He was he was throwing picks out like it was Christmas, left and right. And lucky for me, of course, it wouldn't be a concert. Oh, you're not gonna see it. It's too late. It's it's just it's a it's a pick from him. It's got stuff on it like it says carcass and then a bunch of like tools and weapons and stuff like that. You get the idea. But anyway, so it was so fun to see them. Nonetheless, I was enjoying that show. The guy really knew how to be entertaining, especially when you're behind the mic, you're stuck in one spot, and you're playing bass. You know, there's not that many people that can pull that off. And if you think of Todd Mariah, of Slayer, you think of Phil Lennon, of Thin Lizzy, you know, the bass players, especially Sting of the Police, that, you know, bass players that command your respect. Jack Bruce, a cream, for goodness sake. Anyway, that's my catchphrase for these videos now, apparently. Next band, come on, Testament. And me being a Native American, you know, it's really cool to see my, my people kicking ass. Chuck Billy especially. He's just a big dude looking like he's going to whip your ass. And, of course, it's just that, that growl, that yell, that testament sound. And if there's one thing I remember, Zach was looking at the backdrop. And their bass player had this, this very, if I'm correct, I would say you, you would think a Norse god like beard and it matched perfectly with the backdrop he's like oh my god how awesome would that be if you know they modeled it after him and that was my first time seeing testament i'm more of a thrash fan i really enjoy my fast heavy metal and testament definitely gave you a good dose of that so just being there testament was kicking so much ass of course all these bands always kick ass what else do i say so now it's time for slayer and you got to be prepared these mosh pits are no joke people will push you against they'll come press you if you're in front of people if you're way in the front you're gonna have people nailing you in the head just crowd surfing punching wristing elbowing all kinds of crazy shit so me and zach we were at the very edge so i'm guessing there's one two three maybe and that's us and then the behind us is just the mosh pit and people going crazy maybe two more people behind us but we're at the very front we're very close and it begins Slayer comes out with Repentless and the ass is starting to get kicked. I was having a good time until some guy snuck to the front and just got in front of us and was causing trouble, you know, trying to put his elbow, you know, to keep people back and stuff. That's just a dick thing. move. Just make yourself as big as you can. Keep your hands up. Don't put them down. You want to protect your head and all that extra goodness. So I do remember specifically, Zach got nailed so hard in the head by somebody and I've never seen him this pissed since because I remember you know somebody was coming somebody's flying I look around I duck you know he scrapes my head you know you know I'm like oh my god am I okay I'm good and then I see Zach and I, I oh my god I need to find some glasses I'll show you exactly what happened so Zach is here Zach wears glasses and he's like this I only have some glasses this is him <laughs> He is pissed, and he he does not look okay, because Zach's always literally right behind me at these shows. Like he's like my bodyguard, full beard and all, with the glasses, just looking behind me, cause you know I'm five, five, five six in shoes. So Zach's like a good six two. So anyway, he's always like this. But I just see him. I turn around. This is him, shaking, <laughs> pissed off. And I'm like, oh my god. He has a catchphrase that I've stolen from him. His catchphrase is, it's fun. That's exactly how just breathe up, come down. It's fun. And then he has got others. Like, he's stolen one from Django Unchained. He's like, that's not what I said. Okay? Stuff like that. He's a, he is a machine for one-liners. And my favorite one that I stole from him is, it's fun. And I looked at him. I was like, you okay? He's like, no, John. I am not okay. It's not fun. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, I had to turn around. I didn't want to laugh at him, but he just had this pissed look on his face. Like, who the fuck did that? So, the next song comes on. You know, I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm marching. And I look around. Zach's not there. And Zach is running back and forth. You get people in these mosh pits that run from one side, punch somebody, and then run back to the other side and hit somebody and then get out real quick instead of going round and round and round. So, I saw Zach. He came in. Punched somebody as hard as he could and came back. And he just looked so angry for the rest of the show. <laughs> like he had to have had a headache. Because I saw, 
I, 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 I saw just the look on his face. I've never seen it since. Just pure, just pain and anger. So, you know, I'm like, all right, cool, man. I hope you're all right, whatever. But he was not having it. Another thing I do remember from that show, that was the first time I saw uh, a flash. As sad as this is, I pro what was I, 23 at the time? I had to have been 23, 20, 24 maybe? No, I was definitely 23. 23 years old. First time I saw, like, you know, woman's body parts out, out in public, but, you know, private or in public. It was my first time I saw them in person. A girl flashed the stage for Slade. And I remember looking. I was like, huh. Oh, that's a disappointing first look. Anyway. <laughs> she wasn't, her face wasn't bad, but I was looking. I was like, ah, you really, really going to flash? So we saw the show. I enjoyed the show. They had a bunch of great songs. And. You know, they came out, they did their thing, and afterwards, I started interviewing people. I started interviewing, being like, hey, this is 89.1, WYBF, because during the show, they had this guy in a wheelchair. Every now and again, you get got guys that are in wheelchairs, and they pick you up, and they throw you over the barricade, and that's what they did to him. That was cool. And then I had this really drunk guy, and I used him. I used him for a lot of IDs. You know, you just like, you play him, and then you go into Slayer. But the best one, the absolute best one was Zach. Zach had this, this, uh, this I idea, like, I wasn't supposed to be doing IDs during the time we were waiting, so I was trying to do, I was like, it's 89 one. he's like, oh, that's a terrible time for that, I was like, no, no, and he cut the best ID I could have, so every time I was in the mood to play Slayer, I always had, like, a mandatory Slayer time, it was like 11 p.m. at night on Fridays when I did the show, I would play this. <laughs> It's 89.1 WIBS. Just... It's a terrible time for that. Oh, what? What can we say? Uh, you just talked Slayer. I'm ready for Slayer. Listen to 89.1, John. The Ninja. I don't know why we're doing a radio plug right now, John. This is a horrible Slayer. timing. We're ready for Slayer. Slayer! And then I would bust, bust into whatever. So that, that was pretty much it. And then I interviewed some people. There was a girl there from, from Millville. I live in Vineland, New Jersey. So there was a girl from Millville there. And I remember specifically no. feeling... Fuck. So there was a girl from Millville. She said she was 18. Made me very, very like, ah. It's nice knowing you. See you later. Don't talk to me. But she kept on talking to me. I was like, ah, oh, bloody hell. Uh, like, pretty sure me and Zach were mid conversation with them. She said 18. I was like, hey, bye. We just left. So there we got dropped off, and that was it. So let's see what the set list was for that day. Uh, 1985 tour for Carcass. It was unfit for human consumption. That was number one, Buried Dreams. Two, Incarnated Soul and Abuse. Oh, that's, a, that's a long one. That's three, Cardar Pouch. I don't know what I wrote. Something System. That was four, The Gauntleting. Jeez, uh, I don't know how to freaking write. Dark Satanic Mills was five. Uh, Captive Bolt Pistol was six. Corporal Jigsaw, whatever, seven. Heat Work was eight. And then 1985 reprised lead singer had the flu. Oh, I don't, I don't recall that he was sick, but he killed it if he did. Testament, do not resuscitate. Uh, that was number one. Legions of the Dead was two. Rise Up was three. Dog Forced Goods was four. The New Order five. Practice What You Preach six. Into the Pit was seven. And the Formation of the Damnation. I don't know why I could read that when I didn't do Carcass Justice. Maybe they had some effed up words. I gotta look at it. now. Slayer. This is where we're at. Slayer started with Repentless. Postmortem was two. Born of Fire. Disciple four. Always a fun song. God Send Death was five. War Ensemble. I really love that album. War Ensemble is a masterpiece. To and fro. Uh, when the Stillness Comes, seven. You Against You was eight. Mandatory Suicide was nine. Hate Worldwide, ten. Ooh, Hate Worldwide. Ooh, I don't I didn't even remember seeing that. Chemical Warfare. Now, if you get to see Chemical Warfare, that is a song off the i think it was murder in the chapel or something i'm not the biggest slayer fan but if you see that live that is a very very fortunate thing for you because that's one of their first songs that really made them big that was the first song that was like whoa who's this um off the demo that they did when they first started 11 was take control 12 was oh no hold on 11 was chemical warfare 12 was take control pride and prejudice was 14 off the new album really enjoyed that song 14 was payback 15 seasons in the bits, 16 hell awaits, 17 dead skin mask, 18 world painted blood, also love that song, south of heaven was 19, raining blood 20, black magic, ooh, 
Ooh, they play Black Magic? Hey, baby, that's a good tune. And then Angel of Death 22 with the Hanuman sign. Uh, anytime they ended it, they would have this banner drop. Uh, pretty much saying, rest in peace, Jeff Hanuman, which was always good to see. And that was seeing Slayer. Woo! We're going to go from Slayer to singing about death, God send death, God hates us all, to the Christian rapper Lecrae at Eastern University. That's going to be concert number 20. Dude, I do remember seeing some, some things for that show. So I also remember doing a rap show after that at the Cabrini. But either way, so ladies and gentlemen, did you get to see Slayer? Just playing. Did you get to see Slayer on that tour? Did you enjoy the album? Thank you. Did you enjoy the album, Repentless? Have you seen Testament? Have you seen Carcass? Let me know. And also, stick around and listen to those interviews I play. You can still tell. You can hear the green in my voice. Hey. But in the meantime, guys, it's always fun. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the usual BS. You know what it is. So I can bring you lights that stay on all the time. In the meantime, God bless you.